So it's 3.30, I think we'll start. Uh, Don, can you take a roll call, please? Dr. Mahoney. Here. Mayor Dardis. Here. Mr. Peterson. I'm here. Mayor Judd. Here. Mr. Hendrickson. Here. Mr. Pepcorn. Mr. Wayland. Here. Mr. Strand. Here. Mr. Campbell. Mrs. Sherling. I'm here. Mr. Steen. Here. Mr. Olson. Here. Ms. Carlson. Here. That is everyone. The quorum is present. Can I have a motion to approve the minutes from the previous meeting? Judd, so moved. Is there a second? Wayland, okay. second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carried. Is there a motion to approve the order of the agenda? And uh, Mr. Mayor. Okay. Is there a second? No, no, Mr. Mayor. Yes. This is, um, sorry, this is Mary Sherling. Um, I would like to make an addition to the agenda under 8B uh, land management, um, a recommendation to approve a purchase or excuse me, a sale. Okay, so I'll ask you, is there a motion to approve the agenda with the additional item on land management item B, a sale of a certain piece of land? Is there a motion? Peterson, motion. Is there a second? I'll second. Chad Peterson first and Shirley second. All those in favor say aye. 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 That passes. So we have consent agenda. You have financial report number one and voucher report approval number two. I would take a motion for the consent agenda. Strand, I second. Moved and seconded. Second. Uh, roll call vote, please. Dr. Mahoney. Yes. Mayor Dardis. Yes. Mr. Peterson. Yes. Mayor Judd. Yes. Mr. Hendrickson. Yes. Mr. Wayland. Yes. Mr. Strand. Yes. Mrs. Sherleen. Yes. Mr. Steen. Yes. Mr. Olson. Yes. Ms. Carlson. Yes. So we have the core project update. Terry Williams to report, please. Good afternoon, this is Terry Williams and I'm pleased to provide the Corps of Engineers monthly update. Uh, number one, an update on the diversion inlet structure. The uh, concrete approach and structure slabs are complete and placement of the downstream step slab is, to, is scheduled to begin um, next week. And when the drone footage is running, you can see that that's being formed up and the rebar is being placed. We're about 24% complete and the required completion date remains in June of 2023. On to number two, which is the Wild Rice River structure. Uh, concrete placement for the dam wall footings and control structure slab is, can, is scheduled to begin next week as well. So uh, lots of concrete being placed next week at both sites. And uh, the latest drone footage shows um, that the stabilization slabs are being placed, uh, which serves as kind of a working surface for future concrete placements of the footings and slabs. We're about 10% complete at the wild rice and the required completion date remains 20 to October of 23. The Red River structure, uh, this is our critical path feature for the federal work and, and the design remains on schedule, which, which really happy about. The 65% review by the sponsors uh, began this week and we still are on track to have final plans and specs in September of 21. Uh, Southern Embankment Reach SC1, that's the Western tieback. We're in the home stretch on the design of this one. Um, we're in the final reviews and we've got final design plans and specs scheduled to be done the end of this month. And we'll be able to put a contract out for construction of that, put it out for bids 
as soon as we have permits and the lands are all acquired. Number five, uh, reach SC2A, that's part of the, the camel hump, the dam. Um, the detailed design remains on schedule there as well, and we've got the 65% review scheduled to start about late January on that one. Number six, I-29 raise. Uh, the final reviews are ongoing on that one as well, and we're scheduled to have the final plans and specs available late November. And on the 21st of September, we requested permission from federal court to construct this, and we will start the contracting process once permission is granted by um, the judge. Seven, uh, drain 27 wetland mitigation. The 65% review began on 28 September, and we completed the environmental assessment in September, and we will uh, award a construction contract, hopefully uh, the end of this, uh, this fiscal year in September. Um, with that, is there any questions? Are any questions any of the group? See no hands up. Thank you, Terry. You're welcome. Joel, are you ready? Executive Director report. Yes, Mr. Chair, members of the board. Um, so as you, as you noticed, we've gone virtual and we'll have virtual meetings through the end of the year. Um, in part, somewhat due to COVID, um, but also due to some scheduling constraints with uh, with Fargo City Hall. So I appreciate everybody um, being flexible and and uh, switching over to a virtual environment here for the next few months. Uh, I'll go over a few things that happened um, over the course of the last month. Uh, we had some some great success stories here. The first one is the North Dakota State Water Commission agreements. Uh, you'll notice in your packet uh, this month there were two uh, North Dakota Water Commission agreements uh, and they'll be uh, recommended for approval under the finance uh, 9A on your agenda. Uh, I'll just kind of give a little update. Uh, those two agreements are basically rescinding our prior agreements and, uh, and moving our existing funds around at the state. Uh, with this action, however, it does remove the 10% uh, professional services fee cap on those dollars. Uh, and so essentially we'll be able to submit for uh, a reimbursement of $30 million of uh, expenditures that have already occurred since 2017. Uh, and so that'll help to reduce our carryover amount. Uh, I, I believe we have somewhere around 84 million sitting with the state right now. Uh, we'll be able to reduce that down to around 50 million. Another significant action that occurred, uh, I attended the State Water Commission meeting here in October, um, and we had a, a cost share agreement in front of the State Water Commission for an additional $44 million. Um, and so that was approved. Uh, I'm happy to report. Uh, and that cost share agreement should be coming before the board, hopefully in the next few months so we can execute that. Um, and uh, and we'll have an additional $44 million uh, at the state that we'll be able to use for reimbursements. Uh, the second item to note here, uh, I did make an offer for a communications director position. Uh, I'm happy to report that the, uh, the finalist uh, um, accepted the offer. Uh, her name is Jennifer Darling and she'll be starting on November 1st. Uh, and so we're very happy and pleased to be welcoming her on board. Uh, certainly have her available for the next uh, board meeting so she can introduce herself and uh, we can talk about uh, some changes and where we're going with the communications program with the Diversion Authority. Another item, uh, we continue to work with the P3 teams. Uh, we have one-on-one -on -one meetings coming up here in the next week uh, to start going over uh, and preparing for the draft six RFP. Uh, so we are continuing to keep our schedule uh, with the P3 procurement and anticipate uh, financial proposals in, uh, in mid-March. Um, we also, uh, I wanted to make a note, uh, I did deliver the 2021 draft cash budget to the Finance Committee last month for review. Uh, the reason it's not in your board packet today is uh, a couple more months uh, to we have about 50 million in appraisals uh, right now in negotiation and the timing of when those uh, those transactions occur, uh, whether it be in 2020 or 2021, 
would significantly change our our potential 2021 cash budget. Uh, and so I did present this to the finance committee yesterday and the finance committee did make a motion uh, to uh, direct me to provide the final cash budget uh, no later than December of this year. Uh, and so we would expect to see that at our December meeting for approval. Uh, in the last item here, uh, I have a survey that will be going out to all the board members um, and uh, discussing uh, electronic devices for use for the diversion board. Um, so the thought here is we'd like to be able to provide um, the board packets and everything electronically on a device for each of the board members. So I'd like to get some feedback from the board on that. I believe the email will be coming from Miss Peggy Harder. Uh, so keep an eye out for that. And I'll stand for any questions that, uh, that the board might have. Any question from board members? Thanks, Joel. We'll go to John Chockley. He's got a couple of updates for us today. Uh, Dakota Carrier Network. John? Yeah, this is an action item, Mr. Chair. Uh, this is has been recommended for approval by the uh, Finance Committee. Just briefly, this is one of many P3 MOUs uh, regarding uh, the relocation of utilities. Uh, just briefly, what happens is as part of planning out uh, the construction of the P3 channel, we have to negotiate uh, our, uh, MOUs with each of the utilities along the channel uh, to cover issues of relocation, reimbursement, uh, and coordination with the P3 contractor. Uh, the costs of these contracts aren't necessarily uh, concluded within the contract because it becomes part of the bid three because they'll uh, P3 contractor because they will be performing all the work. That said, they need to know what the specifics of the work that will be performing, uh, scope, time, duration, and coordination with the utility carrier. And so the board will uh, in see increasing numbers of these MOUs coming in, coming across for approval. I can certainly answer any questions you may have. Um, if there are board members who have very detailed specific questions, myself or somebody from the technical side are certainly uh, available to answer those questions offline. Um, but I, I can stand for any questions if any board members have questions. But once again, it was approved or recommended for approval by the Finance Committee yesterday. Any the parties? If not, I'd stand for a motion. This is Chuck. I'll motion. move. I'll second it. Or second. Chuck. Either or. You get that done? Yep. Okay. Chuck and we'll call vote, please. Dr. Mahoney. Hi. Mayor Dardis. Yes. Mr. Peterson. Yes. Mayor Judd. Yes. Mr. Hendrickson. Yes. Mr. Whalen. Yes. Mr. Strand. Yes. Mrs. Sterling. Yes. Mr. Steen. Yes. Mr. Olson. Yes. Ms. Carlson. Yes, that is everyone. Very good, John. You going to do a WIFI update, please? Uh, just briefly, we are still waiting uh, for the term sheet to come from WIFI. They had said it was supposed to be out last week, um, but uh, we're still waiting. I uh, had contacted WIFI today just to see where they were at with the term sheet, uh, and I haven't heard back yet today. But as soon as I do hear back with the term sheet, I will. Uh, update the leadership uh, and especially the leadership on the finance committee. Still looking good and you had an interest rate of 2.125 or something like that, John? Yeah, right now that's that's what the interest rate would be if we locked in. Um, so just waiting on that term sheet to come out. Any questions, Mr. Chockley? We'll move on then. Public outreach, Roger Olson and uh, Rocky Snyder. I think Rocky's going to take it. Is that right, Roger? Yeah, that's right, Mayor. Thank you, uh, Mr. Mayor. Uh, this is Rocky Schneider with AE2S. Uh, 
going to show on the screen here, we the major outreach update over the last month, and it's the bit, probably the biggest land acquisition update too, is we did a, a very large Clomer mailing. So a Clomer, if you remember, is the conditional letter of map revision that we received from FEMA in early September. And that was sent out to all impacted property owners. So it went out to about 360 um, property owners upstream that are impacted by the project. And so they're in one of the four mitigation zones. Um, and in addition to a, a letter, they received an individual map of their property and showing exactly how they're impacted and exactly how um, the next steps for mitigation are. Big thing in the letter was that they were each assigned a land agent. So now every property owner who's impacted has an individual that's responsible for communications with their property. And, and so we've been waiting for this step for a long time and we think it's a really major step. We did take two other steps with the Clomer approval. There was a letter sent from Joel to all the local government units. I believe there were 14 of them. And so all the townships and cities in that upstream area with an offer or a request to meet with them at an upcoming meeting. I believe Joel has done a couple of those and um, been really positive and it's, it's good to open up those communications with those government units. Uh, one other letter going out this week is uh, we call it the non impacted letter. We know that whenever we do something like this, neighbors talk and there's a lot of interest from the wider community in that upstream area about what's going on. So we sent a, a maybe a, a briefer letter to them letting them know where they can find information about the major changes to the project. And so we were uh, excited for that. I one, one other update just to be brief today is uh, we were going to show a, a video of the inlet structure that was flown on Monday. So. We flew them, um, both the inlet structure and the Wild Rice River Control structure on, on Monday this week. And Terry Williams was going to talk over the narration. And um, Tammy, can you share that video? She was also gonna share a slide, so I'm wondering if uh, you lost that. Looks like you got it. Okay. All right, so we're we're starting um, from basically the upstream side of the diversion inlet structure. The flow of the water will be going towards the northwest as shown on the top of the screen. So we're looking directly at the diversion inlet structure right now and, and the direction that the water would flow through it. The approach channel is labeled there and the dam embankments are labeled as well. Um, the site of the future diversion channel is marked um, right downstream of the structure. That's where the stilling basin is going to be. So now we're looking at it from the other direction. You're looking at what uh, we call the right dam walls. Uh, that's the right side if you're looking on the downstream direction. So you can see that the, the footings of most of the walls have been poured. And they'll start pouring the actual right dam walls probably next week, I believe. And then this is the gated structure itself where the three 50-foot gates are going to sit. And you can see that the control structure slab where the three gates will sit have been poured and the upstream approach slabs have been poured. And you can see that they're forming the downstream stepped slabs. And that's the big one that's going to be poured next week. And these are what dam walls. Uh, the footings are basically done and the walls are poured and you can see the the stamped or not the stamped but the formed concrete pattern um, on the walls where the forms have been stripped. It's kind of a, you know, a really nice brick pattern. Once um, some of the concrete is cured in those steps they'll start driving pile in what we call the stilling basin area. So the the pile equipment will move over and start um, where you can see the nice, the nice flat stilling basin area that's been all prepped and ready to go. And it's also outlined by the, the sheet pile, which prevents uh, movement of the foundation to that area. 
So really exciting. Um, by the end of this season, all of the vertical concrete basically should be poured with the exception of the piers and abutments where the gates will sit. Thank you, Terry. Hey, Mayor, this is Mayor, this is Rocky again. Just one last thing on that item. I know last month there was a lot of interest in doing a tour of the structures for the board members. Uh, we were working toward that end, but with the change in, in COVID protocols, we are uh, probably not going to do a bus tour right now. And so we're looking at another self-guided option. Very good. Next, we go to land management, Mary Shirley. Mary, are you ready? You're muted. I'm sorry. Um, I was just saying that was a tough act to follow. But um, <laughs> that being said, we may, we continue to make uh, steady progress with land acquisition. Um, mm -hmm. Six parcels were acquired since our last meeting. Uh, we focus on the diversion channel, the Southern Embankment Reach 1, and the I-29 road raise. Appraisals are being conducted for Drain 27 wetland and the Red River control structure. And the Cass County Commission has held four public meetings um, with several different property owners and authorized um, the Cass County Joint Water Resource District to utilize uh, last resort eminent domain. Um, as Rocky mentioned, uh, there's been considerable public outreach um, post Clomar. Uh, the core uh, surveyors have completed the environmental monitoring for 2020 and scoping for phase two study um, with crown appraisals for the flow easement valuations is being conducted. And we've also received the preliminary phase two report from Watson Associates for the crop insurance development. And that all is in your packet. And that concludes that portion of my report. Any questions? Any question to any members? And those are in their packets or electronically. We can look at them. Yes, right they are. So let's go on to this acquisition property you want to go to. Yes, thank you. I believe Peggy has got the information to share. Um, we've done this in the past uh, when we've had excess property that we weren't quite sure what we were going to need to do. And now we know that we are not going to need this. This is on the fringe. And um, and so we would um, request permission for the Joint Water Board to go ahead and engage um, an auction for this property. So Peggy, do you want to make the presentation on where this property is? Can you see my screen currently? Yes. OK. Thank you. And Mary, you estimate this uh, property is worth about a million dollars. Um, I don't have that estimate with me, Peggy. Were you going to um, make a brief comment on this, or was Joel? I know Eric's not with us today. Yep. So it was just my understanding that when this property was acquired and Eric didn't provide yesterday really kind of an estimate of what the worth was, but it was uncertain at the time if the actual horse barn uh, would be uh, impacted. Now that with the approval of the Clomar, we have determined that the horse barn in the adjacent lots as shown on the map um, will not be impacted. And that's that's basically the information I got from Eric at this point. And so looking at putting those up for auction with the actual ask being today uh, for approval from the board, uh, recommendation came from the land committee yesterday to go ahead and put the horse barn in the adjacent lots that are no longer needed up for auction. Eric did provide some additional information at the land committee yesterday um, that this property was a willing seller and actually had come to the board about it a few times. And just at that time, we weren't sure at the reach of the impacts until we had a completed and approved Clomer. 
Yeah, he mentioned it is probably a million dollars. So do I have a motion to put this up for sale, please? I would so move. Is there a second? George, second. Any discussion? <clears throat> Roll call vote, please. Dr. Mahoney. Yes. Mayor Dardis. Yes. Mr. Peterson. Yes. Mayor Judd. Mayor Judd. Sorry, having a dog issue. Uh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Hendrickson. Yes. Mr. Whelan. Yes. Mr. Strand. Yes. Mrs. Sherling. Yes. Mr. Steen. Yes. Mr. Olson. Yes. Ms. Carlson. Yes. That is everyone. Very good. Anything else, Mary Sherling? No, that's it. Thank you very much. Thank you. On finance, we have Mayor Dardis to report. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, yesterday, the Finance Committee met, uh, uh, as reported by Mr. Shockley, the Memorandum of Understanding with regard to the utilities of the Dakota Air, uh, Carrier Network were uh, discussed. Uh, Mr. Paulson discussed with us the State Water Commission agreements for cost share reimbursement. And uh, on behalf of the Finance Committee, we would like to express uh, uh, our uh, good wishes to what they did. Uh, their work with the State Water Commission of removing the 10% uh, cap for uh, professional services, as well as the $44 million is obviously a very, very uh, positive thing for the diversion authority. So good work by that team of, of people that were involved in that. Also, uh, as Mr. Paulson indicated, there was also a discussion about uh, the, the cash budget for 2021. And uh, we did ex uh, vote to extend that to December, uh, by December 31st of 2020. Uh, I'd stand for any questions, Mr. Mayor. Uh, excuse me, there was one more item. There was a Houston Moore Group uh, amendment for some ad additional expenditure. I believe the dollars were $255,000. And that is for an ongoing uh, engineering issue that we have with one of the uh, downtown Fargo lift stations and the outfall and some settling. So that concludes my report. I certainly stand for any questions. Thank you. Any questions, Mayor Dardis? Can I have a motion that covers both items, please? Mr. Chairman, I would move so. Dardis? Is it moved and second? Any questions, Mayor Dardis? If not, roll call vote, please. Dr. Mahoney? Yes. Mayor Dardis? Yes. Mr. Peterson. Yes. Mayor Judd. Yes. Mr. Hendrickson. Yes. Mr. Wayland. Yes. Mr. Strand. Mr. Strand. Mrs. Sherling. I was yes. logged off and just logged in. Is that a vote? Yes, John, you just have to vote yes. on uh, the finance committee's reports. There are two of yeah. them. We need motion yes. to pass both of them. Mrs. Sterling? Yes. Mr. Steen? Yes. Mr. Olson? Yes. Ms. Carlson? Yes. That is everyone. Good. Just before we go into executive session, uh, Mr. Pepcorn is going to join us in executive session. He did not get on it as an early part of this meeting. So we will have him join us during our executive session. Uh, can I have a, a motion in regards to executive session, please? I so move, Strand. Is there a second? Second, Carl. Peterson, second. Uh, Mr. Shockley, should we read this off before we go into session or is it public? It um, the agenda is public as long as the maker of the motion and the seconder are uh, in agreement that that was their motion to go into executive session pursuant to what's on the agenda. Okay, roll call vote, please. Dr. Mahoney. Yes. Mayor Dardis. Yes. Mr. Peterson. Yes. Mayor Judd. Yes. Mr. Hendrickson. Yes. Mr. Wayland. Yes. Mr. Strand. Yes. 
Mrs. Sherling? Yes. Mr. Steen? Yes. Mr. Walson? Yes. Ms. Carlson? Yes. That is everyone. Well, if any of you have any questions how to get to the next link, Don will stay on this this particular thing to get us on there, but we will reconvene in five minutes when we all get to the new site, please. Thank you. And, and Mr. Chair, we will we may have action coming out of the executive session, so we may need to log back on to this meeting afterwards. Thank you. Appreciate it. Yeah. Dr. Mahoney. Yes. Mayor Dardis. Okay. Mr. Peterson. I'm here. Mayor Judd. Here. Mr. Hendrickson. Present. Mr. Papcorn. Here. Mr. Wayland. Here. Mr. Strand. I'm here. Mrs. Sherling. I'm here. Mr. Steen. Here. Mr. Olson? Here. Ms. Carlson? Yes. And is Mayor Dardis back on? Yes. That is everyone. Very good. We're back in session. Uh, I think Commissioner Strand wants to make a motion. John, could you explain what the motion would be right now, please? John Chocolate. Yes. The thank you, Mr. Chair. The motion would be a motion to authorize the executive director and the chair of the diversion authority to finalize the negotiations of a binding term settle, uh, settle uh, binding terms uh, sheet uh, consistent with the uh, uh, parameters that were outlined in the executive session uh, and uh, to give them the authorization to do that with any uh, minor changes that they deem, deem necessary. Mr. Strand. Mr. Chairman, I make that uh, recommended motion. Is there a second? Steen will second. Any discussion? Roll call vote, please. Dr. Mahoney. Aye. Mayor Dardis? No. Mr. Peterson? No. Mayor Judd? Aye. Mr. Hendrickson. Yes. Mr. Peppercorn. Aye. Mr. Wayland. Yes. Mr. Strand. Yes. Mrs. Sherling. Yes. Mr. Steen. Yes. Mr. Olson. Yes. Ms. Carlson. Yes. That is everyone. Thank you everyone for making the meeting today and thank you for the, uh, the passing of this motion. I will have us adjourn at this time. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks everybody. Thank you.